what's going? It's Alana, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing another episode of Buzzed In, where I basically show you badass apartments throughout New York City. I'm clearly not in New York at the moment. I'm actually in Paris, but that's besides the point. Unless you have a Parisian apartment and you want to show me. But I'm very excited because today I'm going to show you guys Taya's apartment, and Taya's an amazing small business owner and ceramicist. We started off as internet friends and then became in real life friends, and she's super cool, and I can't wait for you guys to meet her. What's especially cool about her and her space is that her home is also her art studio, and so it's really cool to see the blend between living in art and combining your work into like one big studio. She lives in Williamsburg, and if you're unfamiliar with Williamsburg, it's just across the, the pond over in Brooklyn and a very popular neighborhood. And as usual, I'd love to share just a little bit of history. So let's look back on old Williamsburg. So in 1661, this area was chartered by the Dutch West India Company. And this area in Williamsburg was actually originally part of a town called Boswick. And obviously that name then turned into Bushwick. And actually Grand Street used to be a very popular place for farmers to gather to market their produce. And then the title of Williamsburg came around when it was named after the surveyor John Williams in 1802. So with time, because it was on the water, this area saw a lot of development as a growing shipping hub. And it actually wasn't until 1898 that it officially became a part of greater New York City. This area saw a huge shift when the Williamsburg Bridge was put in in 1903. For one, it gave greater access to this area and it also led to a lot of immigrants coming from the Lower East Side who had originally been living in tenements in hopes for a better life across the river. Fast forward a little bit more and a large Hasidic enclave established themselves in this area, especially around 1930s as the Jews were escaping from Nazism. Williamsburg is also known for a large Puerto Rican community that really grew, especially in the 1960s as there was a big increase in factory jobs and opportunity. And then with time, as with many New York City neighborhoods, it became an area for artists to move in for low rents in those iconic big lofts in the form of factories. And it kind of just became this mecca for young creatives. And today it's seen as a very nice neighborhood to live in. It still feels a bit young. It's definitely people who are working and have kind of established themselves as young families. And it's kind of just a cool place to live. There's lots of good food and boutiques and restaurants, etc. I'm quite the fan of Williamsburg. I could definitely see myself living there after my stint in Manhattan. So that's a little bit on Taya and on Williamsburg. And that's, that's enough chit chat for me. So let's, let's head on over to Williamsburg and see your space. Studio apartment. I am Taya. I'm a ceramicist here in Williamsburg. I'm 23, and this is my studio that I pay $2,700 a month for. Welcome to my space. This is very eclectic straight off the bat. The entire apartment is little pockets of ongoing projects that I have. Being an artist, there's just constant movement in the space. This is a fun little ceramics piece that I actually did in high school. It weighs about 400 pounds, but I made it in 2016 when I was doing hand building. I got a lot of my pieces from Facebook Marketplace, honestly, so this dresser, this was stooped. This was from Facebook Marketplace. I, I used to that. live in New York when I was in third grade and my mom had this very similar lamp. And when I saw it on Facebook Marketplace, it was this like rush of home to me. So I immediately got it. I call this the boiler room, but I'm pretty sure this is where the water heater is. This is another clothing closet. And then I do have a washer dryer here, which is such a gym, <laughs> especially being an artist, uh, an artist with a very messy medium. When I first moved into this apartment, I actually didn't want this apartment because I just really enjoy the creaky floors and the crooked ceilings and the cracks and just New York's charm. And so this was almost too sterile. Like, no, I don't know if I deserve this yet, but it was a COVID deal and I left into it with lots of faith. In order to really just take advantage of the space here, this is the secret strip of wall <laughs> where all my ceramic supplies are. I have tools and just random glazes, sponges, all the linens and things that I use. I have these events that I host, so it's important to keep everything really accessible. My wheel, most importantly, is tucked away, especially just to keep this space nice and tidy. I think what I've learned a lot with uh, being an artist in New York and keeping a residency space as my workspace is to just know you don't need the fanciest equipment to do these things and take yourself seriously. You can really start with anything. This is the living room area. 
which has changed so many times and seen so many different angles. The coffee table is something that a lot of people ask me about. I actually got this from Dobbin Street Co-op, which is an amazing secondhand store. I think a lot of New York is just finding these random pieces and having confidence that they will work with you because if you love them, that's enough. Couches are really stressful to figure out which ones work for you in your space. So when I found this one, I actually got it at Walmart and restuffed it myself originally with duvets and linens and things, and then finally got professional foam. One of my friends came over and he said, your apartment is just a hundred shades of clay. And I love that so much. I actually went to Europe this summer. Along the beach of Sicily, there are all these tiles that, because they're in the ocean, they have the same effect as sea glass. So they're all like buffed out and round. And I want to do something really cool with them. I was inspired by the snippets of glaze that are still kind of on the piece. Like, look how cool that is. Functional uh, space for mainly work. This is a very raw piece of wood here that I actually use for wedging clay. This is really work table 90% of the time. Because of how grand it is and because it's literally sitting on top of a, an existing desk, I kind of have the freedom to make this a dining table. I just drape some linens, put some candles, host some friends. I host these supper club style events that are for the ceramic ceremonies that I host. I have about eight to 10 people that come over and we do little ceremonies with wellness and pottery and everyone gets to make a piece. So I recently hosted one and that's where all these pieces are from. So it's just fun to kind of host someone else's creative expressions. This is the rest of my uh, summer collection that I made inspired by tomatoes from my trip to Europe. I just feel like they highlight the simple things in life. All of my collections are pretty much based on a feeling or something that I experienced and I feel like bringing out that experience through cups and highlighting different expressions with glazes and colors, that's just more, that's my style. And I have a bunch of random vases, uh, some of which go to galleries. My dad flew in for 48 hours, I think, put down his bags, and he takes out a measuring tape. He doesn't even really say hi to me first. He just puts down the measuring tape, and he goes, okay, we're gonna build these shelves for you. And we went to the lumber yards and spent, like I said, 48 hours literally doing this, and then he left, and that was it. This ladder actually came from Butcher's Daughter. They were getting rid of it, and my partner at the time snagged it. But it doesn't have any function. Like, I do drape, I did drape this, blanket over it. I spend hours cooking. I'm plant-based, so I eat a lot from home, just so I know what ingredients are in my food. And I love the idea of celebrating the things that you nourish yourself with, so things activity-wise, visually, habitually. I love creating rituals in the kitchen, so knives, all the things that I usually rotate it with like throughout the week, so lentils and pasta, rice, like these are all my bases. But usually I'll always have some rotating produce here that I pick up. It's nice to have like abundance in front of you. I really like this one by Jeremy Fox. It's all of these really amazing veggie recipes but he does love celebrating vegetables and I just think the way that you present something or really does influence the taste and the entire experience of the dish I'm really led by photography and visuals being pretty visual myself with the art form that I use and I have this curtain is honestly one of the best things I've done for this apartment so far because it just separates not just the space, but the energy of this space because when you have feng shui in your bedroom, it's really important to separate your relaxing space from your workspace. And because I have every single vibe in the same corners of this apartment, it's important to keep things separate. So I, I do with this curtain and I installed it from Ikea. They have these racks. I really enjoy muted colors, so a lot of the curtains and the bed sheets, everything is pretty much the same like color scheme. This mirror on the floor here actually, it used to be a tabletop that I got from a vintage store and then I removed the base of it. Nothing's officially hung, nothing is in a permanent place. I'm constantly changing my style, my thoughts, the things I want to look at in a day. So this feels very me to have things just like existing with me as I'm going through phases of my life. I have my like, little library, which 
is dangerously balanced on these uh, floating shelves that are not nailed in whatsoever. But a lot of people ask me why I have my books faced reversed so the pages are facing out. But again, kind of going with that like muted colors and then they have just a different vibe to them without the cover in them. And so I kind of enjoy the look of that too. I think the first thing I noticed about the bathroom here is the tiling, which is so beautiful. I don't know if it's sandstone or some sort of concrete. Again, kind of goes with the theme of like natural materials, using clay, could not be more fitting. All the cupboards, which you might have noticed in the kitchen as well, have this recycled cork. So the building's actually like eco-friendly in a way, and it has renewable energy, coil heating in the floors, and bamboo flooring. They really care about energy here, and I could not align like any more than it already does. So very happy about that. I am a full-time ceramicist and a business owner. So I do small batch ceramics where I make more tableware pieces. I do have some larger vessels, which you might see behind me. I also do online digital work as a part-time slash full-time. Maybe it's full-time. I've lived here for collectively eight or nine years. I had a part of uh, New York life lived in um, the lower portion of Manhattan when I was in third grade so I feel like that's kind of when I fell in love with the city. This is the third year that I'll be living in this apartment for. First renting this apartment the biggest caveats to it was actually the fact that it's rent stabilized so that was a big pandemic gift. Originally I moved in here with a partner and we had lived here for two years together and then we split last year and I was able to take on the space by myself. That one change really led to the explosion in ceramic production and becoming a business owner in the full flushed form of it and it allowed me to really step up to the plate and show myself how I can do this. Finances are really interesting when you're put into a position that is slightly uncomfortable but that pivotal point in my life a year ago was really the most wonderful lesson to know that I'm worthy of taking up this space and making it something that is honoring my career and lifestyle, creating room for more community and love in other areas. So when one door closes, 17 other ones open. <laughs> I really am a firm believer of like, our external space is just a direct reflection of who we are inside. A lot of this is stuff that feeds me back. And I talk a lot about nourishment, if you know me, or being something that is in the form of food or conversation, the words we use, and especially the things that we surround ourselves with. So a lot of the colors and the objects here are very crafty and DIY. A lot of the stuff is also secondhand. My big emphasis in life is to use what's already here and we're equipped fully with energy and the love we need to live as a compassionate, beaming human being, but also we have all the supplies physically, whether it's trends or random desires or all the pieces are, are existing. Like fashion repeats itself, history repeats itself. The neighborhood is extremely homey. There are so many new families, dogs, kids, really just allowed me to know that there's a lot of really cool opportunity for growth here, whether I'm creative or want to start a family here. I also love that there's just kind of everything you need at your fingertips while still being removed from the city. One stop away from the city, which is lovely because I do enjoy the energy of the city, but I now know that that small micro separation compared to other boroughs and places you could be at that really did make the biggest difference to keeping the longevity of my New York experience. It literally hosts whoever you want to be that day and I think the unapologetic energy of everyone around you really gives you space to be whoever you want to be that day, whatever mindset you want to take on, and it gives you this freedom to just be yourself. It's such a fertile city for just who you are and what you want to do. And 